Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time to get properly Korean. Young Toys is a company whose Tobots toy line has been doing gangbusters, taking on powerhouses like Super Sentai and Lego in the Korean market, and defeating them, pointedly so, in Christmas of 2013. Tobots are a bunch of Kia-centric robots aimed at children aged 37 months and up, sort of like a more innocent and more bulbous parallel to General Motors' live-action Transformers Empire. I'm kicking things off with a newer release as of this recording, the Tobot known as Tobot Adventure Z. He's an upgraded form of Tobot Z, one of the three original Tobot Tobots from Tobots' Toyetic Origins. I've heard much tale that the original X, Y, and Z Tobots are a marked step down in terms of quality compared to the new stuff, and maybe someday I'll get a hold of them to find out firsthand. As it is, just be aware that this guy's name literally begins with adventure. Adventure Z turns into a ready orange Kia Sorento, or at least a Kia Sorento that's been slightly squished from front to back and given a touch of rounded cutification. This is a pretty good vehicle sculpt with the front grille area looking hella fine, thanks to the combination of clear headlights and cleanly picked out details. While the license plate and diamond plated strip above the license plate are stickers, most of this mostly paintless look is achieved by the use of several pieces of black and orange plastic for the sake of coloration. Reminiscent of Kotobukiya's style of robot model kits, this visual approach is one of the draws of the Tobot line, albeit hardly the main draw. Also, this thing is kinda big! I don't know if it's a true 1 to 22 scale, but your average Glyos man looks exactly like the kind of humanoid that could hop inside and take a ride if there was an actual interior. Instead, there's just plastic density and straight-up heft. This thing feels like you could drive it around on furniture before chucking it at some kid in the playground that you really don't like. Oh yeah, and there's a QR code tampographed on one of the front doors. Since it's on bare plastic, you could probably remove it with something, but I'm too chicken to have at it myself right now. So, scan away! Go forth and visit the Korean internet! While you do that, I'm gonna transform this fella. There's a whole thing with Tobots and activation keys called Toe Keys, not a Bumblebee. While some are totally necessary, Adventure Z's key just splits stuff. Let's ignore it. This whole transformation is just like things unclipping sharply, ratchets clicking at every turn, and C-clips solidifying and locking almost every component assembly. It's like a mashup of everything good about Transformers and Super Sentai Megazords. And in Adventure Z's case, it's a really good car transformation. There's no major panel off-hang, a great use of car mass for robot mass, and friggin' awesome stuff like his shoulder ratchet injection technique. It's insanely satisfying on all three levels, tactile, visual, and audio. Look at this shamelessly superhero silhouetted protagonistic bruiser of a Kia-endorsed family vehicle alt-moded children's toy! Look at the clean shapes, the smooth lack of visual jank, the loud and proud letter Z on his robot belt buckle. The twin triple something launcher shoulder pylons. The visor face framed by a metallic deal that's totally the goddamn letter Z in mirror image. This guy's definitely got a kid-friendly puff to his overall aesthetic, but he wears it so well, I don't really mind. Creamy white, orangey yellow, and a dull gunmetal join his main palette, all represented strong and sharp thanks to the use of separate plastic pieces. And did I mention that he's huge? Like 11 inches tall and friggin' 7 inches wide? This is the kind of toy that takes over tabletops if you don't keep an eye on him. Tobot Adventure Z includes his mighty Zed gun, which has nowhere to store in vehicle mode and sits rather uncharacteristically limply in his grasp. I don't know what happened here, maybe I got a bad one, but hopefully a layer or two of floor polish will get that peg solid and on par. The gun's got a push button that makes a little doodle bopper along the top retract. What is this nonsense? Two words, rubber band launch. Three words, rubber band launcher. Adventure Z comes with a pile of the things, and the gun is really good at shooting them. Setting aside the inherent danger of firing strips of rubber across the room or at your loved ones, I love this idea. Missile sculpts are often uninspiring or forgettable, and a quick trip to the dollar store means you have buckets of compatible ammunition for this thing. This dude is big! We're on an up angle! Anyway, Tobots are aimed at a younger audience and uh, a very Power Ranger-y kind of audience, and thus, they are not trying to be super poseable. But, Tobot Adventure Z is still pretty dang poseable, especially given those aforementioned, uh, well, not only really limitations, just lack of, uh, you know, lack of targeting. His head's on a ball joint is what I'm trying to say, and this dude's... Didn't have to be on a ball joint, and this ball joint has a decent amount of nod, 
full left and right, even just a tad of tilt. He's got circular stuff going on. He can get just a little bit of that what's going on kind of thing going on. And uh, that's the best kind of thing to get going on. His shoulders are on ratchets. Almost everything here is ratcheting. But these are really smooth, uh, soft ratchets. So this, this forward and backward shoulder motion, you can easily go to places between the ratchet clicks. And that adds a little bit of something, you know? Especially because, like... There are four ratchets on this outward shoulder motion, and it's a lot harder to get in between them because this is a much more clicky, springy ratchet. His bicep swivel is soft ratcheted, so that this one you can kind of get between the ratchets a little bit. Uh, but his elbow is hard ratcheted three times. So it only goes up to 90 degrees-ish, and there's not very much wiggle room. doesn't really matter because the, the clicks are small enough in uh, in how far they go that I, I can still get some good decent subtle posing out of what's going on here and uh, that combined with the bicep swivel just goes places man no waist joint however there is a kind of an ab joint from the transformation so he can you know, do that and just look real dazed his hips are on hard ratchets they go forward and back and they do not go Super far forward. That's about how far forward they go. Uh, I think they actually go a bit farther back, to be honest. But uh, the outward motion, super tough, but I think that's pretty cool. Like, it's not full on Van Damme splits, but there's a lot of clicks going just as far as that. And that's friggin' solid. His knees are a softer kind of ratchet, but still a very springy ratchet, so you only get three clicks and it's hard to stop between the clicks. Uh, the transformation joint here can be used for various stuff if you think it'll help, but generally I just leave it there. And uh, that's about it. Now this guy, because of all these ratchets and all these detented things trying to work in tandem, this posture he's in is uh, is kind of mathematic in how it comes together. Mr. Fanwank did a review of this guy and kind of broke down a formula, an equation, if you will, that I think works. Because if you just transform this guy normally and move everything to, you know, their full stop positions and what looks right, uh, you're going to end up with him kind of hunched down like that. So the equation is one click on the transformation joints to kind of untransform him a bit, one click back on the hips, and one click on that ab joint. And now he's looking at this tall and strong and ready. And let me tell you how tall and strong and ready this guy is. Uh, Tobots are friggin' durable, man. Like, I this is gonna be loud, but okay, check check it out. He's <laughs> he just knocked my stage off the table. Uh, that is how heavy and tough Tobots are. Uh, these guys are built. They're ready for it. I mean, we'll try that one more time. Uh, this could go real wrong, but let's see. I'll hold on to the top up here. and whoa! I'll hold on to the top up here, and... Yeah, he's fine. This, I mean, this is built for a three-year-old to demolish and, and, you know, not end up with a broken toy. Uh, super solid. Feels good. I love this. Uh... And the amount of posability this guy has in tandem with that thickness, that rough and tumbleness, uh, it's a real delight. It's like what I wish Power Ranger toys were like. Uh, you know, just having like a basic suite of heavily ratcheted but varied posability that lets you do just a just a couple of neat things. Just getting in a couple neat like action poses that don't feel super stock still. Um, if there's one problem this guy has is that he doesn't really have heels. So you gotta play with his balance a little bit, and more often than not, a lot of his posing is better for, you know, if you're waving him around and doing flying uh, Tobot Adventure Z kicks and stuff, just boff, because as you can see, he's got wheels for heels, and that means they're round on the back, and on the sides, and everywhere. So for anything angular, that can get a little bit tricky. Uh, anyway, I love how much this guy does in such a solid way. And that's all I got to say about that. I love this toy.
Of the five Tobots I've gotten so far, it's easily my favorite, and I would say it is THE one to get if you're curious about the line. He brings a strong showing of all the toy line's strengths, and features a decent amount of workable posability for a toy aimed at three-year-olds. More importantly, he feels like an apex result of passionate designers who friggin' love transforming robot toys. While not an intricate display piece or superposable mechanical collectible, Tobot Adventure Z is powerfully fun to play with, hitting basic primal toy keynotes with immense accuracy and giant titanium boxing gloves. His transformation in both directions is satisfying, quick, and intuitive to the point of being a relaxation tool. Unfortunately, everything comes with the enormous ball and chain of the toy's price. He retails for just below 60 US dollar bucks over in Korea, 61,000 won for those of you who are butt-rushing your nearest currency calculator, taking into account the costs of shipping and handling a big toy in a huge box from South Korea over to wherever you're at, and it can be a painful expenditure for what is essentially a premium tier toddler toy. Or in other words, collecting Tobots can get as pricey as collecting Super Sentai DX robots bots on their release dates. For your money, you are getting a deceptively high parts count, mostly thanks to both the copious ratchets and multi-part assemblies in place of paint apps. And the plastic and build quality is hardcore, but it is expensive. Hopefully Tobots will make their way to more countries over the next couple years. Speaking for myself, I don't really feel ripped off by my impatience. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I've kind of been having a phase with these original Korean transforming robot lines, because there's more than one. Does anybody remember the name of... Mm, Sonicon?